that's your turbo. That's tiny. Good morning, YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. So yesterday we got the full fuel system installed on the Evo. Today it is time to move on to the turbo kit. This is the fun part of the build. So first thing I need to do is obviously get all the old parts off. The old turbo, uh, exhaust manifold, downpipe. Let's head down to the shop, start ripping some stuff off. If I have time today, I really want to get the full ETS kit on, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna have time for that. I've never done a big turbo upgrade before and I was just done like E85 full bolt-ons. I've never actually stepped into the big turbo world and I'm so, so very excited to do so, especially the fact that I can share it with you. I know this video is gonna be pretty damn long, so sit back, relax, grab a beer, grab a cup of coffee, and enjoy the video. All right, honestly, I'm not exactly sure where to start with this process. What I probably think I'm gonna do is start with removing like the, the some accessories such as the downpipe, the upper intercooler pipe, what else? Probably about it, and then from there, I'm gonna try to pull the turbo from the manifold and then get the manifold off the car. Let's pull all these parts out. Everything down here is going on to the Evo. Manifold, downpipe, upper intercooler pipe, intake, turbo. So I kind of forgot about the intake as well. What I'm gonna do to start, remove intake, upper intercooler pipe, and then the downpipe. The downpipe is kind of a pain in the ass, as you guys know, on the Evos. But I will show you a few little tricks I've learned from the few times I pulled this downpipe off to get, to make it a little easier. Okay, my first major tip when removing anything with exhaust is WD-40. Spray it, in, spray it a few hours in advance. I really should have done it last night and that would make it so much easier. What I'm gonna do right now, spray all the exhaust bolts with WD-40. When I go to remove them in about an hour, they should be a lot looser. You can use WD-40, you can use uh, PB Blaster, just any sort of penetrating oil. This isn't really penetrating oil. I think PB, Bla PB Blaster would work a lot better, but I don't have any right now, so this will have to do. First things first, let's get this upper intercooler pipe off. It's just a one piece on this car right now. Also, if anyone wants to buy it and you're local, I don't want to ship this thing because it's super long being a one piece. Um, if anyone local wants this thing, slide in the DMs on Instagram. So this intercooler pipe is super easy to pull off. Two 12 millimeter bolts there. There's a clamp there and a clamp there. That is all you have to do to get this thing off. Or I'll probably pull off the, the rear clamp. All right, so the upper intercooler pipe is off. Got it sitting over to the side. Now it is time to pull off the, this intake. So it's very simple to do. There's a clamp down there from the intake to the turbo. Whether you have a factory BPV or a diverter valve, blow off valve, whatever, you have to disconnect the line for that. There will be a clamp down here to the lower intercooler pipe that connects to the BOV. On this ETS intake here, this heat shield bolts to the frame reel down there under this intake filter. We will need that factory MAF sensor, so I'm gonna have to swap that over to my new four inch ETS MAF. I don't need the MAF housing because I picked up the, uh, the four inch ETS MAF, which is highly recommended by English Racing. There's also one more coupler back there going to the turbo that I will have to remove. I can either do that right now or do that when I get the turbo off. Might as well just do it right now. For sale as well, if anyone needs this ETS intake, it's only been on the car for a little bit. Smash those DMs. Throwing a little paper towel or something in the turbo inlet, just so you don't fill it up with any dirt or junk or anything of the sort. Or you can tape it off with duct tape, either way. Okay, the easy part is done. That was all super easy to do. Now the pain in the ass part is everything else. So let's move on to the downpipe. I'm gonna have to jack this car up a little bit get my fat ass under there to get the bottom two downpipe bolts off. And I'm also gonna be pulling off, most likely pulling off that wheel over there to get this downpipe off as well. Yeah, get the car up in the air, get on some jack stands. Don't not use jack stands because I don't want you to die, all right? Got the car up in the air, wheel pulled off, and you're probably wondering why I had to pull the wheel off to get a downpipe off. I'll show you in a minute. You don't have to do it, but it's just easier. So there's a few bolts right up top, one right there and one right there. Pull those two bolts off, they're both 14 millimeters. Um, like I said, score them down with WD-40. I didn't just because I just had this downpipe off. This downpipe should be pretty easy to remove because I yeah, I just had it off, so. And I think there might be one more actually. Yeah, there's one more you can get to if you just feel under the exhaust manifold here. I won't be able to show you removing these bolts because I don't 
there's no way to get a good camera angle on it. But just know, there's three bolts up top, not two. Pull them off, and then we can move on to the uh, to the lower ones. Okay, so we got those top three bolts off. It's hard to get good light on. Top three bolts off. There's also one nut on the back side. If you reach your hand, it's on the turbo side, so you have to reach your hand. It's a stud on the downpipe. It's really hard to explain. So reach your hand over. It's on the opposite side of these three bolts, and it's a little farther down low. I like to use a ratchet wrench on that nut. It's actually, it was actually really, really easy to get off. There's only one bolt that's hard to get off. So the next step that I'm gonna do, there's this little splash guard in here we're gonna pull off. So there's two clips up there and then mine is bolted to the SSP ender tray. Pull the splash guard off and then I'll show you the next step. So as soon as you get that splash guard off, there's this little metal plate right there for the CV axle. Pull that guard off, the little metal guard, and then you'll see the last bolt for the downpipe tucked under there. Can I help you? What are you doing here? Is that sick? Yes, honey, I've already seen it a million times. <laughs> here, let's show us on the Genesis. Okay. <sighs> here you go. All right, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> I'll go and call it myself real quick. <laughs> <laughs> You're a dweeb. Okay, take this clunker out of my hand. Mm. Now there are two more bolts going from the downpipe to my test pipe, or if you're stock, from the downpipe to your stock cat. Ugh. So crawl up under here, and they are these two right here. Both really easy to get to. One there, one on that side. Pull those bolts out, both 14 millimeters. And then I have that O2 sensor up there, so that's a 22 millimeter wrench to pull that big boy out. And then your downpipe should come on out. All right, we have a slight problem. I think I'm supposed to get the downpipe out from the top and it looks like it could, can come out, but this bar is in the way. The problem is if I pull all the nuts off for that bar, all the suspension is gonna drop down and maybe pull my CVs out. So I gotta figure out how to keep these wheels up and get that bar off. So my advice to you is pull that bar off while the car's still on the ground, then throw some nuts back on. So when you jack it up, the suspension doesn't drop down. We got the downpipe off and now this is the kind of the hard part for me and I'm kind of confused. I don't know if I pull the turbo off right now and then pull the manifold off or pull the manifold and the turbo off together. When I dropped this motor out to build it, I dropped the motor out with the turbo and the manifold on. Um, obviously I'm not gonna drop the motor to swap out a turbo. So what I think I'm gonna do first is try to get the turbo off the manifold, get the turbo out and then pull the manifold off and then we can get everything else on. As soon as we get the turbo and manifold off, that's all we need to pull off, I think. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is. We already have the downpipe off, the intake off, the upper intercooler pipe off. Yeah, that's literally all we have to pull off. So we're getting there. We got most of the easy stuff done. The downpipe was kind of a bitch to get out, as you guys saw. Now it's the hard part, though. This is where knuckles are going to get bloody. A lot of curse words are going to be said. This is where Devin gets scrabby. So let's get to work. I am going to start by pulling off the four top bolts right up in here and then after that i'm just gonna start pulling random stuff off i don't really know what i'm doing right here honestly never really done this so there's a little bracket right by the inlet to where the intake goes on with uh, two 14 millimeter bolts i'm gonna pull that off and i feel like there's another bracket somewhere as well i'm just not sure where it is So that's the bracket I just pulled off. It's relatively easy to get off. I used this little floppy thing on the end of my extension. Made it so much easier. The turbo's kind of getting loose. Looser by the minute. I feel like there's one more bracket I remember that might be under the car. So I just removed this little plate thing right here just because it's right next to the turbo and it's kind of in the way. Um, there's only three bolts to pull off. You probably don't need to get it off, but like I mentioned in the other video two days ago, it's more time in the long run, but it makes it so much more fun to work on. I don't even know if I'm going to put it back on. <sighs> All right, so I've made a little bit more progress. There was a bracket or a mount on the bottom side that I used like a super long extension to get to. There's no way I would be able to show you with the camera. The bolt was super tight into the turbo and it actually ended up breaking off inside the turbo. So whenever I get this turbo removed, I can fix all that. I think the next step now is to get the oil return line off. So it goes into the block. There's just a little 10 millimeter bolt on there. And then there's also gonna be an oil feed line I'm gonna have to remove. I think as soon as I get both of those off, 
the turbo technically should come off. At least that's what's gonna happen in my mind. I'm not sure if it's gonna work like that, but I'm just gonna bust out some more lines, get out some more bolts, and let's see if I can get this turbo off. Some people online are actually saying you need to remove the exhaust manifold before you pull the turbo off. So if I get all these lines off and the turbo won't come out at all, I'm gonna have to remove the manifold first. But like I've said before, this is my first time doing it inside the car, so I'm not sure the proper way to do it. I'm just learning as I go. So I listened to the internet, and right now, I am trying to pull off my exhaust manifold. There's so many nuts holding this thing on though. Ah, pain to get off. Ah. I think there's like eight or 10 nuts on this thing. So it's gonna take me a minute to get it all the way off the car, but it'll be doable for sure. I think as soon as this manifold's out, there's gonna be so much more space in there. And I can really see what's holding the turbo on the car still, or on the motor. There's gotta be another bracket somewhere that I'm not seeing. Ah! Damn, that's tight. I think, I think my manifold's about to come off. I think. The hell, I thought I got all the nuts off. Come here, bitch. Ooh. Got it. Look, babe. Got it. Oh, what a bitch. So the last thing I should have to pull off is the oil feed line, so it bolts onto the head. I'm pulling the banjo bolt out right now for that. As soon as that's off, the whole turbo should come off. Oh wait, I have a few boost lines going to the EBCS as well. Oops. Nice. So I believe there's two lines, one going to the wastegate, one going to the turbo housing. Ow. All right, come on turbo, get out of here. Please come out. What the hell is it still connected to? Oh, there is a little bolt. It's like a little holder for the oil feed line that's bolted onto the head somewhere. A little 10 millimeter bolt. And then it'll come out. Bet. Okay, where did my socket go? How many damn tools is this car gonna eat today? Babe, did you steal my socket? All right. There is a coolant feed and a coolant return. I kind of forgot this was a water cooled turbo, honestly. So I have to pull those off as well. And they're probably gonna leak. So what I'm gonna do, right when I pull the line off, I'm gonna plug it with a bolt. I'm just gonna jam a bolt in the end of it real quick. But either way, it's gonna leak a little bit. All right, this next part is gonna get a bunch of coolant everywhere. So when you pull the return, the coolant return line, there's gonna be a lot of coolant that comes out. Um, just make sure you refill it when you're done, of course. Don't swap me out the turbo. But yeah, I guess let's pull that line off. This will be fun. This is the worst part of it. <laughs> yes. Got it, babe. Guess what, babe? What? I know. Can you not use that towel? You're gonna scratch up your paint though. Baby, feel how soft. Put it on my face. That's really rough. It's okay. It's gonna be okay. You got your turbo off? Yeah. Are Everything's you? off the car now. Now I can put my new stuff on. Oh lord. You wanna come look at it with me? Um, in a sec I'll come over there. Oh, and you're not scratching up your car? Yeah. Okay, goodbye. So like I've said, I've never done a big turbo upgrade before, and I know the precision is just air-cooled. It's not water-cooled at all, so there's gonna be no coolant lines going to it. I'm guessing, do I just plug the coolant feed and coolant return lines on the Evo? If someone knows, please drop it down in the comment section below. Babe, come look at my turbo. Yeah, new stuff, old stuff. How do you know? Because that's all new looking. Oh. That's all poopy looking, dirty. Does that stuff look cooler? Yeah. Oh my gosh, that's your turbo. This is a turbo. Like, yeah. That's this tiny. This gay thing, and then that's the fat ass one. Honey. It's gonna go room, room really fast. You understand? Yeah, I freaking understand, but that thing is tiny. Is my, mine and my Genesis smaller than that? It's like half the size, probably. Really? Not half the size. It's pretty small. I want one like that. I want to be in there and go for a ride. You can drive it. How about that? That's when you invite me to look at it, okay? It's 11 o'clock, already. This yeah, it is. Uh -uh. 10.50, my bad. You better rip. <laughs> Good thing you got a turbo car. Huh? Yeah. 
Here is the scoop. I really, really want to get this all this turbo kit on today. I'm not going to get it on. There's no way. I have to run into town to get a few parts to finish up this build, get a few other things done. And you're never, you're never going to guess what I'm about to drive. It's been so long. Check this out. Ah. Wow. So much different going from a slammed car to a big truck. So much different. And let me tell you, this thing's so nice to drive sometimes even though I never drive it. Hey, it still runs. The reason I have to drive this and I'm not taking the bike today, I need to go pick up that wide body panel for the FRS. Obviously I can't fit that on my bike. I could probably put it in my backpack, but I would just have a truck and I have a few other things to do. I'll show you along the way. It's definitely been neglected. Like the radio doesn't even freaking work. The truck's super, super dirty. It's kind of funny. I, was, I kept going back and forth with myself, wondering if I should take my truck or not. Um, Cause I want to, I love saving money on gas. And then I'm like, why do I even own the damn truck if I'm never gonna drive it? Today is the one day I need to. I can't take the Evo. The FRS is kind of torn apart because the wide body panel. Um, I can't take the bike because number one, it's about to rain. Number two, I need to pick up that wide body panel. And the last thing I had was the truck and I'm, I kept like not wanting to drive it because I want to save money on gas. But I forced myself to. Step out of your comfort zone every day. This is me stepping out of my comfort zone. First things first, I need to go pick up the hardware for this Mac. I got the goods. Hey, got the haircut. Still growing it out. Still get, trying to get that top a little bit longer, but I just got the sides cleaned up. I need to grab these little plugs for my cooling system. AutoZone had nothing at all, so time to try Napa. Napa had the plug. What's up? Whoa. Hello again. What are you doing so far up there? All right, dudes. The last thing I need to do on this little day is pick up that wide body panel. So I'm going to go grab that right now. All right. The panel has been acquired. I don't know if you guys saw it before. If I have a clip, I'll throw it on the screen. It's pretty bad. And now it is perfect. Dope. I am stoked on that. I'll try to get it. Try to get this thing wrapped. Um, hopefully within a week. I'll probably do a little tutorial for you guys as well, so that'll be dope. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap up this video right here. Really, really hope you enjoyed it. Kind of sucks we didn't get the full ETS kit on today, but it will be happening in a few, within a few days. So stay tuned on the channel. Hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. Feel free to share the video as always if you really enjoyed it. And last but not least, smash that thumbs up button down below. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.